All right, we're back, and uh, well, I'm gonna have trouble with this one. Mike Vercruzzi and Drake Napater, Napater, and uh, once again, uh, Mark Wilson uh, joining us here, the uh, billiards coach from Lindenwood University and the team captain for the Moscone Cup this year. Welcome back, Mark. Thank you, Ray. Drake Napater wins the leg and breaks, makes the ball. Yeah. So, well, uh, we were discussing on the last match. Um, you know, you know who who might be the the players to fill in those final final two spots uh, beyond the points leaders uh, for the Moscone Cup team. And uh, boy, I tell you what, uh, you know we we see all kinds of things uh, and and ideas that uh, folks have uh, regarding who should be on the team there. But have you have you had any uh, any suggestions that that you would actually uh, uh, consider or Oh, yeah, no, you hear a lot of good things, you know, and a lot of interesting details around. But some people call up and or email you and things that they're so ill-informed, you know. And you can get heavy criticism. And why isn't... Uh, well, these are, you know, super fans. Because the, a lot of players have super fans. Well, um, some people don't understand why Mike Siegel isn't on this event. <laughs> you know, I mean, huh. things like that. And, <laughs> Mike and, I get no really. I get roundly criticized. One guy sent me an email, and it was so comical. Um, it, it, it really goes back to it's much like criticizing a baseball manager. If you don't live with those guys every day, you're only semi-informed and not really able to make an effective decision by looking at the statistics of right. what happened in the past. Because you don't know the guy had a fight with his wife and hurt his hand, and now he can't bat today or whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. But uh, last year, a guy says. Listen, I understand your interest in having good character on the team and everything, and I understand that. But this year, now we got to have the right guys. I mean, I don't care if they're murdering, druggist, rapists, uh, <laughs> uh, in prison. I don't care. I want them on the team. <laughs> it, it was so preposterous. Like that's we want to win at all costs, and we don't care the ramifications, you know. And, but I do know that he was just passionate about winning. So, but as a kind of comical thing, I generally don't even respond. But I put. Who are you saying was the murdering, rapist, drug dealing prisoner? You know, and, <laughs> and and he says, "Well, no, you know what I mean." You, you, you. and I said, oh, "Okay, well, well, who who was it you thought?" And he, he names this. Okay, here's who I want: <laughs> Shane Van Boning. I said, "Oh, okay." Justin Hall. All right. Justin Bergman. I said, oh, okay. Corey Duell. And and then the Skyler Woodward. And so. I said, well, are you aware that was four of the five that we had last year? I mean, do you even watch? I mean, <laughs> four of the five. No, it was. That was yeah. the team. The only, yeah. the only one was Schmidt was the one I had instead of uh, yeah. Woodward. I mean, so you get, and then it's so crazy. Honest to goodness, Ray. If I could resurrect Willie Moscone in his prime from the grave and I put him on the team, what is Wilson doing now? He's got Moscone on the Moscone count. What could be crazier? You know, it's like <laughs> so you just kind of got to be thick-skinned and understand they mean have, well. They're you passionate. A, you have a tough job, Mark. Yeah, well, it's not really. It's a great job. Well, it's, it's a tall a, order. I mean, yeah, you're not going to make everybody happy. And really, I'll be honest with you, uh, the guys that really put out and really get in the running and put their blood into it, I call them and tell them whether they made it or not before they hear. And I owe it to them. But the most distasteful job you can have, and I'm here to tell you that uh, last year, when I had to call and make that uh, announcement, the, the five guys I told that did make it versus the three guys I told didn't. Yeah, it's tough It call. was, oh, the, the, the joy of the ones that made it 
versus the pain of the ones that didn't. It yeah. was absolutely heartbreaking because I'm compassionate and, and I understand the pool player plight. Yeah, you wanted them all to, to make it. Yeah. Yes. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Hmm. Yeah, it's tough. Tough job. And uh, but that's just the way it is. You have to kind of understand that it comes with the turf. If you're afraid to make the hard call, the hard decision, you're not the right guy. And and that's just the thing. Yeah, I do it not for friendship and not based on uh, who I want. I based on who's the best, the most deserving, and gives us the best chance. We need to win. We have to win. You know, and it's our home turf. If we lose this year, now we're going to London next year. They're going to have a three or four thousand seat arena. I mean, it's just it's, it's going to escalate even more against us, even if we show up with a little bit better team next year. So, yeah, what I really, really would love to see happen, and what I think would be the most effective, is if if we had a team that was further in advance, and we could train together and go and do clinics and exhibitions and challenge matches, and get them a regular paying salary to be team members then we'd have something that's helpful to the sport because it's aspirational but it would also give them a chance to really gel the way it is we just get the last week and we got three public appearances on uh, everybody flies in november 27th mm-hmm. to lindenwood we practice a little bit that night get ready for the next day we drive to decatur which is three hours away and do a two-day clinic and exhibition and fundraiser charity fundraiser mm-hmm. we use challenge matches yeah. And it's two hard days, two 10-hour days after we get there. Then we come back and we train at Lindenwood with new cloth for two days. And then December 2nd, our big event at Ballpark Village in St. Louis. And then the next day back at Lindenwood, and the next day we fly. And we're out in Las Vegas on Friday and prepare to play on Monday at the Moscone Cup. So... That's a that's a pretty rigorous pace to keep up, but it's so valuable on all fronts and gives us some chance to train together, but it also gives us a chance to build the sport together. The December 2nd thing at Ballpark Village in St. Louis, for those of you listening that don't know what that is, Ballpark Village is part of Bush Stadium. It's owned by the St. Louis Cardinals and Anheuser-Busch. Mm-hmm. And it's a great big uh, venue that has a high-def TV on the wall that's as big as an interstate billboard. Pretty, Clear. pretty sure Derek had something to do with that. Derek is the voice of Ballpark Village, so he's very instrumental in that. And if you knew the volume of meetings, we had two meetings just the other day of logistics. They're on board. They're going to do it. And it gives us some tremendous visibility. It's the, it's the biggest, newest, brightest night spot in St. Louis. There's seven bars and restaurants. The Cardinals Hall of Fame is there. The... Uh, just all kinds of things it's it's so unique and so it's just a a one-of-a-kind thing and they are going to help us last year we did the battle before blackpool you came to that Mm -hmm. okay and there was um well we had 200 people pay to come and that was out in a little bitty town a little bigger than a little bigger than mike durbin's shop but not a whole lot you know right and that was capacity crowd and here we're shooting for four or five hundred people to attend if not more awesome and if anything is going to really happen good this year for the future of the sport Great and shot there. getting anheuser-busch on board it's going to stem from this particular event mm-hmm. and so if not we're probably at least another year away from having something good so well look at mike roll here well you know i think one coin was left on three from the last match i don't think it's three to two okay no. there he goes there he goes We would have had to go into a time warp for that to be three to two. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So, uh, so what's the um, uh, the the format up there in um, in St. Louis? So, uh, well, will it be similar to the battle before Blackpool? We're gonna we've modified it just a little bit. It will be somewhat similar because there's going to be the evening competition that you bore witness to. But we've made a few additions, and there's an afternoon VIP clinic for 50 people from two to four p.m. Mm-hmm. Then there's a meet, eat, and greet with the players and, and get a picture and an autograph and have a word with the actual Moscone Cup participants for Team USA. That night, the uh, Derek is holding a, oh, he says it'll be 300 people, uh, one of his uh, Darioki karaoke contests that has pretty good prizes attached to it. So that will bring in quite a nucleus of people. 
And then uh, after the dinner, we'll be having the competition with the players amongst themselves. Mm. And it, it goes like this. There's a point thing, and everybody, it's a round robin. We have two diamond tables. It's a round robin event, races to four. And then the four highest point getters will play a scotch doubles final. And uh, nice. seed number one, seed number four, like last year. And pretty yeah. good prize money, too. That, yeah, that, was a lot of fun. that was a lot of fun. Right, and there's an ultimate winner because the point's awarded. And top prize is about $750. And last place out of the five will get at least $250. That was a nice shot uh, just from, from uh, knee pater there. Just ch- trimmed and nicked the one ball and billiard made the billiard on the four. Yeah, it sounds like a lot of fun, Mark. Well, to top it off, we also have the Nine Ball Mall, where uh, all the good supporters of our sport are entitled to come and have a booth space. And so you can expect to see Simona's Cloth, Diamond Tables, Master's Chalk, mm-hmm. Ultimate Team Gear jerseys, APA, um, you know, I'm leaving Durban Cues, Billiards Digest. I mean, there'll be... yeah so. It'll really make a statement. It's kind of like, it's not just a pool match, but kind of a pool festival. Mm-hmm. And this will be streamed as well. And uh, in-house on this big screen TV. But what we're really shooting for is for Ballpark Village to have a viewing party the next week and to further promote Moscone Cup activities to the public in general. Now, it's going to take a while to warm up to it, but because it's the uh, middle of winter, they're okay with doing it because if they get anything at all, it's good. And they're on board for three years to do this as the headquarters of Team USA. And this place is epically cool. I mean, it has a retractable roof. It looks right in the Bush Stadium. Nice, nice. Yeah, you're going to have fun. Oh, we got a result here. Is Dustin Wood just a speed? Shark on the other table. And that brings us to Mike Durbin. Well, where are we at on the team uh, on the team score here? And now? Sean. Looks like we're almost tied here. Just joking. Uh, <laughs> I was going to say, wow, that was, a, that was a heck of a comeback. Sean here. and Mike Durbin. All right, uh, Mark's going to sneak away for a second and get those match assignments done. And uh, we'll get him back here in just a second. Meanwhile, here comes uh, Mike Veracruzzi breaking rack number four. Very close, very close, but no cigar. And uh, Mike will have a ball in hand here. And everything's pretty much available. This is a race to four, as are all matches.
Well, everything's sitting very nicely here. Mike will have a chance to go on the hill. Three to one. Drake Napier, solid young player as well, playing for the Lindenwood Lions. Well, Mike has come up a little bit short on his uh, position here for the seven ball. Taking a really good hard look at this. This is a very tough shot here. Okay, he's going to dig in here and try to draw it past the side pocket. No good. Well, Drake Napetter here with a chance to get right back in the match here. side pocket here with the eight ball. Oh, corner shot. And Drake Nipeter will be tying it up here two apiece. Boom. Well we'd like to thank all of you for joining us out on the internet here. We've had a lot of uh, a lot of good information coming from Mark Wilson here on the upcoming Moscone Cup. Sounds like it's going to be a blast. There we go, rack number five. Two ball is tied up with the eight here at the bottom left of your screen. Drake will have to make a decision here. He wants to draw back and play a safety on the two ball here. He can. trapped up on this eight ball now. for uh, Mike for Cusy. Winner of this game is on the hill. And we'll put another bead on the scoreboard for their team.
Well, Mike breaking and on the hill. side pocket and Mike has a really nice table here and a chance to close out the set three to two currently leading Five ball will go between the seven and nine into the corner pocket. I don't think you can hold it for the five and the seven at this angle. the side pocket and unlocked the vault. go forward here with the cue ball. A little bit of inside English and come back to the center of the table. And this nine ball for the win. Another win for the Durbin Destroyers. Mike Fercusi moves forward. All right, more action coming to you. I'm gonna save that match and be right back. We'll see who our next match is going to be. Stay tuned. <laughs> 